Good morning, everyone. Would you please stand as we sing our call to worship? Father, as we come before you today, Lord, we do thank you for the promises, Lord, that one day we'll be there with you on that beautiful shore. Lord, I pray that you'll be with us as we study your word, Lord, as we live for you, Lord, as we rejoice in what you have done for us on the cross, Lord, that through you, Lord, our sins are forgiven, and Lord, we're made right with God. Dear, dear Father, we just thank you for the gift of your son and for salvation. Lord, bless us and speak to us, and Lord, I pray that we will make you known to the people of this community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, it is a joy to welcome this morning to First Baptist Church on a beautiful day that the Lord has given us to worship together here in this place. Uh, on your pew, uh, on the insides of your pew, you'll find a little black notebook, our attendance register. If you'd take a moment and sign that, uh, we appreciate having that record of your attendance. And if you're visiting with us, we'd love to have contact information just to reach out to you and say thank you for coming uh, also there's a little blue card in the rack if you'd like to fill that out we can contact you by that as well uh, a couple of announcements uh, coming up looking toward the month of may baby dedication on mother's day uh, graduate recognition the week before on that first sunday of may uh, for all of our graduates we've got a list compiling and so if you are high school college technical school graduate uh, since the last year of our, uh, uh, of our recognition, then uh, let us know so we can recognize you on that day, have a little gift that day, we'll have lunch in that day, and so it's a great day. May the 5th, we'll be joining together for college graduate, uh, for our graduate recognition, and then on Mother's Day, having baby dedication, and to be glad to involve those as well. Uh, this Saturday, the 19th, I would like for us to, uh, all who will, to come and help with a little work project. Uh, down in our youth area, uh, we have had quite a renovation of the floors, had quite a renovation in the painting, and we need to replace the ceiling grid. And so that will be a job that uh, we'll join together. And so uh, we just need some helpers to come. People come be a part of that this Saturday. About 8 o'clock, we'll be through by noon. It'll be a good day to work together uh, coming up this Saturday uh, at 8 o'clock on the 19th. And then the big uh, announcement in the bulletin is Vacation Bible School. And as you read through there, I would encourage you to be a part of that. And you say, well, how would I be a part? Well, you see the ladies 
in charge of that. And uh, one way you can do that this, uh, this morning, right after the service, uh, Anna's going to be over in this wing, and uh, Kristen and uh, Kristen will be over in this wing. Katie's around. Uh, Katie will be over there too. So in the wings, just go over there and just let them know you'd like to help, and they'll get you signed up and a part of that. And it won't take. This isn't the training time. This is just the time to, to be able to. Uh, find them and to say, I want to help in Vacation Bible School this year. So that'll be right after the service this morning. Come by and see the ladies and be a part of this great week in the life of our church. Well, it's great to see you this morning. Let's continue on in our worship. Would you please stand as we continue the worship? <laughs>
Let us pray. Our most kind, gracious, and loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just thankful for this beautiful day that you've given us and, and this opportunity that you've given us to come into your house, Lord, and, and just lift you up and lift each other up, Lord, and, uh, and I'm just uh, thankful to be here, and, and, and Lord, I just pray that you'll be, be with Brother Tim today as he brings your word, and, and Lord, I just pray that your word would fall on receptive hearts and that we would just take your word and, and spread it throughout our, our lives, Lord. Lord, I just pray for that uh, lost person today that might be here. Uh, Lord, I pray that today would be the day that they would accept you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, be with those that have prayer concerns. Uh, be with those that have lost loved ones. I just pray that you'll comfort them. Lord, we come to a time in the service which we give back a portion you so graciously give to us. I just pray that you'll take this offering and uh, multiply it and use it to further your kingdom. Lord, most of all today, we're thankful for your son, for it's in his name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Miss Greta, for playing for us this morning, sharing with us. Take your Bible and turn with me, if you will, to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 4. Uh, we're going to look at one verse as our text, but keep your Bible open because we're going to look at the full chapter 3 and 4, most of it. So uh, you'll have your Bible open there. We won't be skipping to different places much today, but we're going to be looking at this account of Peter and John as they go to the temple. A man is healed. And then they're arrested and they bear testimony several different times of the Lord Jesus. I want us to think about it in terms of our theme for the summer, make Jesus known. Make Jesus known. So let's stand together as we read. Chapter 4, verse number 13 will be our key, key passage. And then we will go from there. Now when they, meaning the religious leaders, whenever the, they saw the boldness of Peter and John... And perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized they had been with Jesus. That's the key. They realized they had been 
with Jesus. This morning as we pray, one of our uh, uh, members, Carol Heppelman, uh, one of our attendees, Carol Heppelman's husband, Alan, passed away this week. And so you be praying for this uh, family uh, in this time uh, after the death. She was out and about and uh, took a tumble and uh, injured herself. And so you just be with her in multiple different needs that she has in her life. And then if you've seen the news this morning, if you saw the news late last night, uh, Iran had lost, uh, launched a major attack against Israel. Uh, Israel was able to knock down most of all of the rockets that were fired in. Uh, but uh, one escalation leads to another escalation leads to another escalation. And I think the uh, official word from several were, let's just let it be, okay? Um, it's kind of like if somebody lost a 200 missile attack against the United States. Uh, I don't know that we would just let it be. I think we would want to address that. So you be praying for Israel. Uh, as the, as the uh, things escalate there, uh, people ask me all the time, do we feel like that we're in the end times? I feel like we're in the end times. Uh, since the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and his ascension to heaven, we're in the end times. Uh, is this the very end of the end times? Well, Paul thought that too and Peter thought that, but it could very well be because, I mean, we're seeing unbelievable things as we're seeing uh, stars as it were headed toward Israel. That's exactly what the, it looked like last night. Uh, and uh, as you read through the book of Revelation, we just have to pray, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. Don't be afraid, but share with people, make it known about Jesus, because time could be short. Let's pray. Dear Lord, as we come to you today, Lord, we come and we lift up uh, the Heffelmans. Lord, I pray that you'll just be with them and their needs. And Lord, regardless of what's going on in the world, Lord, there still is injuries. Lord, there still is our death. Lord, there still is grief. There still is the need for comfort. And, Lord, may we be a comfort to them and to others in our congregation, in our community, Lord, who have needs. And, Lord, we do pray for Israel. Lord, we pray that you will be with the leadership of Israel. Lord, I pray that you'll be with them as they are under just steady attack, Lord, in so many different facets. And, Lord, I pray that you'll help us to realize spiritually the impact of Israel. And, Lord, I pray that you'll help us to know uh, geographically and nationally, Lord, just in the world stage, Lord, just a little piece of property that you have given to the Jews thousands of years ago, still in dispute, still under attack. And Lord, I pray that you'll just show yourself faithful. Lord, I pray that you'll intercede. And Lord, I pray that you will come quickly. But Lord, until then, may we make you known to the people we come in contact with that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that we have forgiveness of sin and new life in you. Thank you, Lord, for this day. And Lord, I pray that you will be in the situation there in Israel. Bring peace to Jerusalem. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, as we think of the passage today, uh, it reminded me uh, in Cookville, there's a restaurant that we used to eat at a lot of times, El Rey, and you may have eaten at El Rey before. And uh, it was one of those places that anytime anybody on the staff would go and eat at El Rey's, and they would come in, immediately people would say, What? You've been to El Rey, okay? You've been to El Rey. Just that, there's a Mexican restaurant. You could, just, you could just smell the spices on you, okay? That's what I want to think about in the passage today, and that is whenever people come in contact with you, they'll have this thought. You've been with Jesus. You've been with Jesus. You're walking with Jesus. You're a follower of Jesus. There's something about you that reminds me of Jesus. That's the whole thought for this summer as we think about making Jesus known making jesus known making jesus known in the words we say making jesus known in the life we live making jesus known as we proclaim the christ making jesus known through vacation bible school through the through the fair booth that we'll have through all the different emphasis this year uh and probably in the next week or two we will introduce uh, uh a special gospel of john distribution uh, i would love that we would permeate the county and beyond with the gospel of G of john so people will know Jesus. He said, well, everybody in Carthage has got a Bible. Everybody may have a Bible, but is everybody reading their Bible? Uh, we're going to give them, this is one book where we're challenging every person in Smith County to read the Gospel of John. You say, why the Gospel of John? Well, it's written for one person, uh, one, one person, written for one purpose, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and that believing you may have life in his name. You see, as we have this opportunity, I want us to, to be praying, I want us to be helping, I want us to be sharing, I want us to be living. In fact, one, one emphasis we're going to start today, uh, it is especially for May, 
And especially for families with small children. Anybody can do it. Anybody be a part of it. But small children, I think, will engage the most. And it is a pray May. Pray during the month of May. 35 different prayer emphases. You start down here at this square and you kind of work through like you would an Advent calendar. Uh, and it gives you prompts on here's some things to pray for today. Uh, and you lead your family in praying for May. And I think uh, after all that's happened overnight, uh, we really need to be praying in the month of May. This is the month to pray uh, for the Lord to make himself known. And so families, be sure and pick one of these up. Uh, others are welcome on that. I think we've got 20 or 25 and we'll get more as we need them. Uh, there's a marker that goes with it. You check off where you've been. And there's a little gold sticker. And I'm sure that's to go at the, at the end uh, of your prayer time, but uh, it has a QR code that gives you all the instructions. So pick, one, pick up one, put it where you, where you gather for breakfast, that would be a good place, or supper. Uh, put it someplace that you can spend just a moment every day praying with your family, uh, making Jesus known. Well, as we look at the scripture today, as we look at this passage, this is all about Peter and John. Peter and John, Peter and John, Peter especially, uh, who was the spokesman of the disciples, Peter who was the fisherman, who was called by Jesus, uh, is a beautiful picture. If you watch, if you watch The Chosen, the uh, uh, depiction of Peter uh, and some of his challenges and why the great catch of fish was so important to his life uh, and his leadership coming out of it, it really do, I think, give a good presentation on that, even though it is a lot of uh, artist uh, uh, interpretation. Uh, but Peter is that leader of the disciples who was very unlikely. I mean, just three or four years before this incident, he was out on the Sea of Galilee. He was a fisherman. Uh, he was just a, a, a guy. I mean, he wasn't a holy type of person. He was just a person uh, who God then called, the Lord Jesus called and said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And they left their nets and they followed Jesus, he and his brother Andrew. Uh, James and John, their co-workers as well, followed after the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter was one of the inner three, Peter, James, and John, as they would, as they would go in special times with Jesus, Mount of Transfiguration being one. Uh, whenever Jesus went into the garden, he took with them uh, Peter, James, and John a little further into the garden and said, stay here and pray. Peter's one of those who said to Jesus, I'll never forsake you. Even though everybody else forsakes you, I will never forsake you. And remember on the night of the betrayal, he denied the Lord three times. I don't even know him, he said, with cursing, which I'm sure a fisherman on the Sea of Galilee knew how to do. Uh, as we see Peter, we see him then transformed after the resurrection as Jesus reinstates him. He becomes the leader of the disciples again. He's leading them. And today is just a regular day in the life of Peter and John as they go into the temple to pray. So let's start it right there. Take your Bible, open it back up to the passage, Acts chapter 3, verse number 1, as we see them going to the temple to pray. Now, this is part of making Jesus known. It may not be a headline, you're getting ready to let somebody know about Jesus. Just be ready. Just be ready because this is an ordinary day when something extraordinary happens because you're ready to make Jesus known. And so as we see this, we see first that they, they make Jesus known uh, with their confidence. And that's what we're called to do. Make Jesus known with your confidence. Have confidence that God is in you as a believer in Christ. Have confidence in the scriptures. Have confidence so that whenever the opportunity comes, just make Jesus known. Tell people about him. Have that conversation with people. It says there in chapter 3, now, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon. A certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple. A little bit later, it says he was there. He was over 40 years old. Okay, so over 40 years, he'd been laid at the temple, called Beautiful, uh, the gate. And the, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. And seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked him for alms. And fixing their eyes on him, Peter, uh, uh, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them attention, thinking they would receive something. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. That's some major confidence right there. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that it can bring that change. And it says, I took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength, and he was leaping up, stood up, walked, and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping 
and praising God. So as we see this passage unfolding, as we see this passage lived out, as Peter comes into the temple with just a, a normal day, he's just walking along and there's a beggar like he's seen over and over and over again when he's come to the temple because he always laid at the same gate. But this time he looked upon him and the Holy Spirit moved upon him and he said to him, here's a man in need, do something about it. Let me tell you, whenever you have a, a premonition, whenever you have a sense of moving, whenever you sense the Lord's leading you to something, whether it's to take somebody some food, whether it's to take somebody some, some, some uh, anything else, uh, clothing, etc. cetera, uh, if it is just to make a phone call, if it's to send a text, do it. We don't just haphazardly think of to do kind things. God impresses on our hearts to do them. Why? Because through them, we're making Jesus known. And so as we see this, this confidence that Peter has, first he has confidence in the power of God because he knows God can save. He knows God can heal. And so he says to this man, look to me. And then he says, be healed in the name of Jesus. And he reaches down and he lifts him up. Uh, so he has confidence in the power of God. Now, like any good uh, follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, what happens next, it, it just, we should just be ready. Uh, Peter and John, they're standing there in the temple. It says there in verse uh, 9 and 10, all the people see the lame man who's been standing there uh, who's been laying at the temple gate for over 40 years. They know it's him. And so they all run together, thousands of people run together. And what any good Bible-believing believer should, should be ready to do is what? Preach the gospel. When you get a crowd, preach it, okay? Uh, don't, don't, don't second, just preach. And that's exactly what they do. So Peter saw it, he responded. Verse number 12, men of Israel, why do you marvel? Why do you look intently as though we did this in our own power or the godliness that we had that made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of, the, of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised up from the dead. Be ready to, to preach the gospel. Have confidence in the, in the gospel. Jesus' death on the cross, his burial, his resurrection. You say, well, there's something, something else we should say too, isn't it? Is there another story we can tell? What, what about? No, just preach Jesus. Just preach. That's where it starts. Make Jesus known. Let people know who Jesus is, that, that you killed the prince of life. God raised him from the dead, and his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. Yes, the faith that comes through him was given him this perfect soundness and presence of, 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 of life. So preach the word, preach Jesus, share with him. And then he goes on down and he says there in this passage, he has confidence in the word of God. He says there in verse number 18, but those things which God foretold by the mouth of all of his prophets that the Christ would suffer, he has fulfilled. In other words, all the whole scripture is fulfilled in the Lord Jesus Christ. I think it's so interesting. This isn't a priest that's given this message. This isn't a learned man who's given this message. This is a fisherman who's untrained and unlearned who's given this message by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. In other words, you don't have to be a seminary graduate to tell somebody about Jesus. You, you don't have to be a Sunday school teacher. You don't have to be a deacon. You don't have to be a preacher. You as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ can share and make Jesus known in the life of people. And so do that. Share the good news and then have confidence in the salvation that he brings because notice what it says in verse 19. Repent therefore, be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send Jesus Christ who was preached to you before. Believe. Put your faith and trust in Christ. Repent. Repent is to go in one direction. We say this every week almost. Go in one direction. And then you turn and you go in the other direction. You're walking away from the Lord Jesus. You're living your life for yourself. You have no thoughts of spiritual things. You're just moving away from the Lord. Well, turn. Turn to Jesus. And put your faith and your trust in him. He's the one that will save you. He's the one that gives us that hope of everlasting life. And it says down there in in chapter 4, verse 4, however, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of men came to about 5,000. Now, whether that's 5,000, including the 3,000, including the other disciples, or whether that day 5,000 were saved, there were 5,000 men. 
And the word continued to go out and to spread and to spread and to spread because people were making Jesus known. He had confidence. He had confidence in making Jesus known. He had confidence in the gospel. He had confidence in as he shared. He had confidence. The second thing, not only did he have confidence, uh, but he had communication. He shared it. Make Jesus known in your communication. You say, well, we just heard that. Let me tell you, did I mention that every time Peter had an opportunity, he preached the gospel? I mean, this is whenever, he preached the gospel first whenever the crowd gathered. Then they are arrested. <laughs> they are arrested by the religious leaders that arrested Jesus, the Sanhedrin. They're put in prison to where that they're heard the next day, and it picks up there in verse number, uh, verse number 5, chapter 4. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, uh, and as many as all the family of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem, Time to preach. Time to make Jesus known. Time to share again the goodness and the, and the commitment and the confidence that you have. And they say in verse number 7, by what power and by what name have you done this? <laughs> Instead of just rejoicing that a lame man for over 40 years is walking around leaping and, and, and praising God, they want to know who gave the authority to do this. Because we're in the temple. We just don't do stuff like that around here. <laughs> we don't see the hand of God move. We don't see lives change. But, well, Jesus was a, was a life changer, okay? And so whenever he did that, he just began to share. And as he began to share, he shared uh, in verse number 7. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we're this day judged for a good deed done by, to a helpless man, by what means you, he was made well, let it be known to you. In other words, he, he's saying to them here, he's saying to them, he, he, he's about to proclaim to them what happened. It all happens in verse 10. Let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus, you see, he had that, he had that, that praising of the Lord Jesus. He had, that, he had that proclaiming of the name of the Lord Jesus. By the name of the Lord Jesus, that was the question. What, what was the name that you used to heal this man? The name of Jesus. You say, well, why don't that happen today? Let me tell you, when you call on the name of the Lord Jesus as an as a, as a unbeliever, as someone who's lost, you put your faith and trust in Christ, he does far more miraculous things in your heart and life than just making a man who's lame walk again. Uh, you see, what he does is he comes in and transforms you. He comes in and makes you a child of God. He comes in and makes you just as if you never sinned. He comes in and makes it to where you don't have to come to me to tell me to go to God for you. You just go directly to God through the access of the Lord. He does all of that. As we come to Christ, we proclaim Jesus as the Savior. Uh, it says, I proclaim to you the, by the name of Jesus of Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, the gospel and he's preaching it to the ones who just had condemned Jesus to death, the Sanhedrin, the religious leaders. I think it's so, so beautiful here. The crowd gathers, he preaches Jesus. The religious leaders gather, he preaches Jesus. He's going to preach Jesus. He's going to make Jesus known. And it says there, by him, this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Can you imagine that? Here's an untrained, unlearned fisherman from Galilee who's walked with Jesus, and now he's quoting Scripture as the understanding for the most religious of religious leaders. He's telling them Jesus is the way. He proclaimed the power of Jesus to save and to heal and to make a difference. You see, that's what people want to know. They, want, they don't want to know just that this, here's, here's 10 more activities to add to your schedule. They want to know, does Jesus change lives? Does Jesus save souls? Will Jesus save me? Yes, yes, and yes. Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died on the cross for your sins and rose so you could have everlasting life. See, that is the power of God, and we proclaim that. Jesus, uh, Paul proclaimed that. The Scriptures proclaim that. The good news of the Lord Jesus is that he is the Savior of the world. Well, uh, we make Jesus known, third, third point, uh, by our commitments, by our commitments. Uh, and we saw that there in verse number 11, that Jesus is that cornerstone. He is that first and that foremost. Cornerstone, uh, my understanding, I'm not a builder, okay? Maybe I should have cleared this by John before, before I stepped out on the limb. But I believe a cornerstone in masonry 
It's whenever you bring everything together, the cornerstone then goes at the top and holds it all together. Something like that, okay? And how that works, I don't know, but he's the cornerstone. He's the chief. He's, the what, he's what it's all moving toward. It's what holds it all together. You take all of the Old Testament, it's looking to Jesus. You take all of the New Testament, it's looking to Jesus. You take Christianity for the last 2,000 years, we're all looking to Jesus. He is the cornerstone. He is the chief stone. He is the one on which it's all built. Jesus Christ is that one. And Peter, as he's sharing here with the religious leaders, he's saying, I believe in this. I've made my commitment in this. I put my faith and trust in him, and he's transformed my life. He is number one. Then he goes on in verse number 12, a great passage to circle or underline or star in your Bible. He says, nor is there salvation in any other. For there's no other name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved. That is uh, such a understandable verse that Jesus is the only way. I said Jesus is the only way. We're not in here teaching that there's 12 different ways to get to heaven. You just choose which one you like. Uh, we're not saying that there's, there's an American way and a Jewish way and a Hindu way and a Buddhist way and a Muslim way. There's only one way. Amen. And that way is through the Lord Jesus Christ. You see what he says there, there's, there, nor is there salvation by any other. There is no other means to salvation. There's no other way to salvation. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so as we realize that, people who don't know Jesus, there is no other way. That should compel us to realize we've got to make, people, we've got to make it in Jesus known. We've got to tell people. We've got to share with him. We've got to have opportunities to, where we can share with him. I think that's one, of the opportun what, one thing that we do in Vacation Bible School. We invite the boys and girls to come, not to manipulate them, but to share with them Jesus. Whenever we're at the fair booth, we're not just painting faces. Whenever we're at the fair booth, we're not just giving away water and snow cones. We're making Jesus known. We need to find ways always to engage people who don't know Christ. Not just to gather together, which is great on Sundays and, and to, on Wednesdays, and, and to be encouraged and be trained and be strengthened. That's part of what we do, absolutely. But it's for a purpose, to go out and to make Jesus known, that we would have that encouragement to say, let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you, because there's no other, other name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved. You see, the Bible's very plain, for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, it's through the Lord Jesus Christ. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You'll be saved as you put your faith and your trust in the Lord Jesus. Well, what is there to do? You put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. You follow after the Lord Jesus. There is nothing else there. But once you come to Christ and he transforms your life, you want to be a different person. You are a different person. But you see, it begins with Jesus coming into your life and putting your faith and trust in him. It was Peter's commitment. It was his, he was 100% understanding that Jesus is that only way. And he preached him every time an opportunity came. He continued to make Jesus known. Uh, in uh, fourth thought, uh, we make Jesus known in our courage. I mean, you think about Peter and John, they're standing there. And Peter probably said, you want to jump in anywhere? No, you're doing a good job. Keep going, okay? Yeah, I'll be praying for you, okay? That's why you always go with two, uh, to share with people. But, but as, as Peter was sharing, I mean, the people there in verse number 13, the religious leaders, they saw the, the boldness. Boldness would be the same idea as courage, okay? Uh, they saw the boldness of Peter. Not brashness, not rudeness, but boldness. Because he was willing to speak up. Uh, and that he was very focused on what he was sharing about Jesus. I think it's so, so interesting to see this passage in, in a couple of more chapters over in Acts when the apostles are, are arrested. That they aren't, they aren't begging for their life. I mean, they just saw this group crucify Jesus. They aren't begging for their life. They aren't shouting for justice. They aren't saying they were un, uh, un, unduly treated. I mean, they're just preaching Jesus. It's not about us. 
It's not about our comfort. It's not about what situations we're in. We're just sharing Jesus because in many situations that we would never get ourselves into, but the Lord leads us into, it's for one purpose. There's somebody there we'd never have opportunity to talk to. They need Jesus. Make Jesus known. And that's what happened. They saw the courage of the disciples to preach, to share, to stand before them. I mean, it'd just be like if you were called upon to, to testify, uh, say, of, of a judge. No, say, say more than that. Say the governor. No, say, say the president. No, say a king who could, who could have life and death in his hand in your life. You know, that's where you start weighing words and, and being very diplomatic because you don't want to say something to trip them off and then all of a sudden you'd have your head cut off. No, not Peter and John. They're just preaching Jesus. They saw this courage. They saw this boldness. And they saw how much spiritual power that they had. It says there they were uneducated men, untrained men. They marveled that they'd been with Jesus. And then seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they commanded they go outside, they conferred among themselves and said, what shall we do? We got to do something. What are we going to do with these men? Because, I mean, they're courageous. They're courageous in their stand. They're courageous in their gospel. They're courageous in proclaiming Jesus as the one who healed this man. What are we going to do? And that's the last point for today. Make Jesus known in your conduct. Make Jesus known in the conduct. What are we going to do? Well, this is what we're going to do. Verse number 18. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. Don't mention Jesus anymore. I, I pray... If that be the stipulation between me and being in prison, me and having my family taken away, me and whatever the, the outcome would be, I'd have the same courage that Peter says. I'd have the same courage as Peter says. Because, I mean, they gave them an option. They gave them an out. They gave them a way that they could be cleared, and that is just simply don't talk about Jesus anymore. Don't mention Jesus and so whenever we're thinking about what, what do they do, what is our conduct, what do we do whenever somebody says you can't talk about Jesus anymore? We talk about Jesus, okay? That's what it says there in verse number 19. Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. In other words, no matter what you say on that, how can we not tell the good things Jesus has done in our life? How can we not talk about how that he saved us from our sins? How can we not just tell, tell about Jesus that we have a home in heaven? How can we just tell about Jesus that he walks with us and he helps us and he secures us and he encourages us? He's with us. How can we not tell? How can we not share the witness that we have of the good things of Christ with people just because somebody says don't share that? You see, we have to be very polite. We have to be very courteous. But we can't not share. That's what we do through the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I pray for the people in countries where that is against the law. You know, there are many countries, Muslim countries, especially for a Muslim to convert to Christ and then to share with someone else about Jesus, that is absolutely a capital offense. I mean, there are Christians who are put to death every year for that offense, proselytizing, telling people who don't know Christ about Jesus. And as we see that, it's not just something that happened back in Bible days, it's something that happens in our day. And if it should ever come to America, would we be ready to stand up and say, even if it's my life, I've got to tell people about Jesus? Well, while it's not our life, while it's our, uh, what we do, and nobody's stopping us, that's especially where we should tell people about Jesus. Make Jesus known. Well, they, they shared together. Look what they did after that. Verse 23, being let go, they went to their own company, companions, and reported to all the chief priests and elders had said. And so they heard that. They raised their voice to God with one accord and said. So they went back and they told, you guys are not going to believe what happened. Listen, this, what happened? We were just going to the temple. And there was a lame man. And he now is walking through the power of Jesus. And we've had two times to preach to great crowds and thousands have come to know Christ through our preaching in two days. Well, that'd be something to share. But then what do they do? They rejoice. I mean, that's great news in what Jesus has done, that people are coming to Christ. They rejoice together. In fact, they rejoice and they say, Lord, your God, you made heaven and earth and sea and all that's in them. 
by the mouth of your servant David, you said, why do the nations rage? I thought, man, how, how applicable this passage is today to exactly what happened last night. Why do the nations rage? The people plot vain things. The kings of the earth took their stands. The rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. You see, they said, you, you are the God of all creation who has brought Jesus from the dead. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do what, their, what your hand and your purpose determined before now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servant all boldness. Give us courage because they're going to tell us again, and they're going to tell us again. In fact, they're going to, they're going to not be long before they take Stephen and kill him because he professes Christ. It's not going to be long before James, the brother of John, they take and they kill him with the sword to, to, to show that we're not going to put up with this. not going to be long until Saul starts bringing in men and women, boys and girls from everywhere and puts them to death because they know Jesus Christ. It's not going to be long before persecution sweeps through. But they're saying, Lord, in the midst of all of us, give of this, give us boldness. Boldness for what? To make Jesus known. Give us boldness. Give us courage. Give us opportunity. Help us to see and to do what you call us to do. Well, what about us? What about us? Just thinking about what they did. Uh, it began with seeing a crippled man in need. That may be where it starts with you. Maybe where it starts with me. There's somebody in need. There's somebody who needs something. Maybe they need a pie baked for them. Maybe they need some cookies. Maybe they need a meal brought to them. Maybe they need just somebody to mow their grass. Maybe they need whatever. They need something. We can make a whole list of stuff. Just everyday, normal, routine stuff. They need something. And then we meet that need. We meet that need through the power of the Lord. We meet that need. We just take them some food or we take them something that whatever it is that they need. We, we minister to them. We help them in some way. We go and we minister and we care. And then we have opportunity in that engagement to tell them about Jesus. Make Jesus known. And as they do, then God works through us to bring them about that hope and that strength and that glory of the Lord Jesus. Then we come back together and we say, let me tell you what happened. I was taking somebody some milk and, because they said they needed some milk. And all of a sudden they trusted Jesus. And they're going to be with us on Sunday. And they're going to come and rejoice together. Let's rejoice. And then let's pray and say, Lord, do it again. Do it again. Let somebody else come. Lord, do it again. Do it again. Let's share. Let's be bold in all that we do that we would have confidence in Christ, that we'd communicate Christ clearly, that we'd have our commitment in him, that we'd be courageous to face opposition, and that our conduct toward others would be one of rejoicing in all the things that God has done. Big things, healing a man that's not walked for, from birth and he's over 40 years old, that's a big thing. But let me tell you, God works in big things, he works in little things, I was reading in the bulletin this morning, and I noticed that the first song was, Let Others See Jesus in You, and I thought, that's good, because I'd sent Clayton, I thought, a uh, list of what we're going to be preaching. And then he said today, said, would you send me a list of what we're going to be preaching? Uh, I, the one I have ends at Easter. I thought, man, that's exactly the song. Let others see Jesus in you. Make it known. You say, that's coincidental. You know, if it only happened one time in my whole life, it'd be coincidental. But things like that happen over and over and over and over. How? Because God is moving. God's real. God does stir within us. And he does little teeny weeny things. And he does great big things. And that's where, regardless of your life, regardless of the needs of your life, don't feel like, well, it's insignificant to go to God. No, go to God. And let him meet that need in some way. And then give him glory. And say, praise to the Lord, all the things that he's done. Well, this is, how, this is what you just sang. I thought it was so, so uh, ironic I wanted to share that, that God moves our hearts. While passing through this world of sin, others your life shall view. Be clean and pure without, within. Let others see Jesus in you. Your life's a book before their eyes. They're reading it through and through. Say, does it point them to the skies? Do others see Jesus in you? Then live for Christ both day and night. Be faithful, be brave, be true. 
and lead the lost to life in Christ, let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in you. Keep telling the story. Be faithful. Be true. Let others see Jesus in you. Make Jesus known. Make Jesus known. In this summer, make Jesus known. But for the rest of your life, live for that purpose, to make Jesus known in the lives of people. You know, as we, as we saw last time, you know, where Paul was sharing his testimony and he was sharing it with King Agrippa, I just remind you of those words we shared last week, what King Agrippa says, almost you persuade me. As we make people, make Jesus known to people, that doesn't automatically mean that they're going to turn and, and follow Christ. But it means that we've done what we've been called to do, to make Jesus known. And then it's up to them, as the Holy Spirit brings that conviction, to say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. But you see, what we've been called is just like Peter, there with the lame man, there in the crowd, there in the Sanhedrin, just let Jesus be known. You don't have to worry about exactly what to say, how to say it. The Lord will give you that. But the more you read your scripture, the more you'll know what to say too. So I just encourage us. Let's make Jesus known throughout this summer, but throughout our life as well. Let's bow our heads together this morning. Making Jesus known assumes that you know Jesus. You put your faith and trust in Christ. If you're here today and you've never trusted Christ, you can't make him known until you put your faith and trust in him. And I just invite you this morning to say yes to the Lord Jesus, to come and to, and to profess your faith. To come, we can pray together. You can come pray at the altar. The Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Just have confidence in the word of God. It's true. And what it says will happen. You trust in Christ, you'll be saved. Just like we've trusted in Christ and we're saved. Just a moment, I invite you to come. Or maybe you'd say, I know I've trusted Christ, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. I've trusted in him. But I've never followed him in believer's baptism. I never have made that public profession that I'm a believer in Christ. I've never even had that initial making Jesus known to other people. But I'd invite you to come this morning. Say yes to the Lord. Say yes to obedience. Yes to doing what he calls you to do. To be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Not to be saved, but because you are saved. Because you are right with God. Or maybe to be a part of this church. I'd invite you to come. Maybe you have a prayer need. We can pray together. Just a moment as we sing, I invite you to come. Dear Lord, speak to our hearts today. Lord, speak to us and Lord, give us that understanding. Lord, how precious it is to be saved. Lord, how precious it is to know you. And Lord, we want that for other people. Lord, may that be our goal, to make Jesus known. Lord, I pray you start with ourselves. Lord, just examining our hearts, do we know Jesus? Have we put our faith and trust in him? Do we believe? Have we repented? Lord, I pray that you'll help us, Lord, to, to come to you and to come to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together. Let's sing. I invite you to come. Come to the Lord Jesus. him how I proved him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more oh how sweet to trust in Jesus just to trust his cleansing blood just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I proved him more and more Jesus Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust him more yes tis sweet to trust in Jesus just from sin and self to cease just from Jesus simply talking 
one more verse because the Spirit's moving. Maybe you'd come too. Amen. We've had four to come this morning, all on profession of faith. Amen. So uh, as we sing, you come. All right? One more verse. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Amen. Be seated for just a moment. We are very excited this morning to have four to come. Uh, on profession of their faith. Uh, Gamble, come on up here. We'll, we'll, start, we'll start with the last, okay? Yeah. Come on, stand right here by me. This is Gamble Gibbs, and uh, he's been talking with his parents about trusting the Lord. Gibbs testimony that he's trusted the Lord. He knows he's trusted the Lord. And so we'll sit down and we'll let him tell me that. But uh, that's not what matters. That he's done it in his heart. That's what matters. And so we rejoice in him. All who rejoice in Gamble say amen. 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 And Mac, uh, Baxter, come on up here. This is Baxter Wilkerson, and Baxter uh, comes this morning. He and his dad came by, and we've talked together. Uh, he's prayed and received Jesus, uh, well, last Sunday, last Sunday, yeah. Uh, and so we just rejoice with uh, uh, Baxter coming, uh, both coming for uh, profession of faith through baptism. So all who rejoice with Baxter, say amen. 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 And Jamie and Jennifer. Jamie and Jennifer Summers have been with us for some time. Uh, I know Jamie, he's a good fisherman. And so uh, <laughs> he's taken me once. He's promised me hundreds of times. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no pressure, though. No pressure. But anyhow, anyhow, Jamie uh, comes today. And Jennifer, they have uh, uh, been believers, you said, since 2000? Since 2000. Uh, but never followed the Lord in believers' baptism. And so uh, we uh, welcome them. We look forward to uh, their baptism, uh, for them to proclaim uh, Jesus Christ as Lord through their baptism. And uh, it's just an important step. Even though baptism does not save us, it is important because Jesus commands us. This is obedience. And it's how we publicly profess him uh, to the world. So all those who rejoice in uh, uh, Jamie and Jennifer say amen. 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 I'm going to ask everybody to stand. Let's see. Uh, the boys, y'all's parents, come and stand with them. Uh, Josh and Tara and, and uh, Jeremiah and Haley. And then everybody come by and greet them. Tell them you'll be praying for them. It's going to be a big day when we have baptism. And it's just uh, an exciting time as we uh, serve the Lord and as we make Jesus known. Make Jesus known. Let's go with the song. Send a great revival in my soul. Send a great revival in my soul. Let the Holy Spirit come and take control. And send a great revival in my soul. Amen and have a great rest of your afternoon. <laughs> 